Perfect. We're ready to go? We're ready to go. Perfect. Um, so welcome everyone to this meeting of the planning committee being held on Tuesday the 10th of August at 7.30 via Zoom. Um, I won't go through the sort of usual preliminaries because we don't have any members of the public here, so straight into the agenda. Uh, do we have any apologies for absence? No, none are received because we're all present and correct. Perfect, thank you. Uh, does any councillor have any declarations of interest? I can't see any. Um, in which case we'll move on to the minutes of the meeting of the planning committee held on the 20th of July. Are we uh, happy to accept those as a true record? All in favour? It's unanimous. Perfect. Thank you. Have we received any public questions in according with it, oh sorry in accordance with standing orders 22 and 23? No, none have been received, Chair. Thank you, Heather. Uh, have we received any letters of objection? No, none of those received either. Very good. Uh, in that case, I'll move on to the meat of the meeting, which are the applications registered week ending uh, 16th, 23rd and 30th of July. I believe starting about page 10, don't they? Page 19. Page 19. Oh, I was quite, quite a way out. Um, page 19. Uh, so applications 5 2021, 1705, 1904, 2020, 1, 2, all don't uh, meet the criteria required for consideration. So Page 19, quite a quick one. Um, and then on to um, item 5, 2021-1979 at 4 Moreland Road. Uh, Heather, over to okay. you. Yep, so I think we've got six images um, for Mim to share on this one. Um, so this is the construction of an outbuilding for habitable accommodation to the rear of number four Moreland Road. Um, so this is the host property here, which is just a, a rather modest bungalow. Um, and then I think if you move on to the next image there, Mim, you can see the approximate location of where this particular annex is due to be um, positioned. Um, and then the next image shows that actually the road slopes away to the rear of the host property uh, down towards Rye Hill. Um, so as I've mentioned here, the road slopes away to the rear towards Rye Close, which is made up of bungalows. The host house is also a bungalow. The proposed outbuilding is 8.5 metres in width, which almost fills the plot width. Six metres depth and a 2.87 metre height, which extends above the height of the rear fence line on the boundary of number eight Rye Close. The design is similar to that of a home office with a flat roof and basic design and materials. The proposal appears to be tightly positioned behind the existing garage, leading to a possible inadequate living conditions for the future occupants. No additional parking provision is provided for the proposal. So I've therefore said consider, recommend refusal. The proposed outbuilding is an unacceptable addition to the rear garden of this property, leading to a possible loss of immediacy to number eight by close. The proposal also appears to provide inadequate living immunity to the future occupants. Concern is also expressed that no additional parking provision has been provided on the site for the new dwelling. Policies ESD2 and T11 of the Hartons and Apia Plan and policies 40, 69 and 70 of the District Plan refers. Thank you, Heather. Um, any comments from councillors on this one? Uh, Councillor Farmer. I was going to say... The phrase outbuilding for habitable accommodation is a new one on me. I, I think they mean don't they try to get away with an extremely tiny bungalow, but um, it's, it's just not going to work. I mean, trying to put what is, one assumes given the fact that it's got a bathroom in it is meant to be something you can live in. It, the, the space is just nowhere near big enough to, to take, the site isn't big enough to take what's proposed. And it's difficult to see other than that it is, an, it is looking at trying to put in what is actually going to be a dwelling. If I could just interject there that actually in the application details, it does state that the proposed outbuilding is for the parents of the yes, owners I was going to say of it's a dwelling. four Moreland Road. But, so, yeah. so it's a dwelling, it's not a habitable outbuilding. No. 
Well, it is a habitable outbuilding, but it's a habitable outbuilding to be a dwelling. Well, yes, if you like, <laughs> yes. Well, whichever whichever way you define it, it's as... Uh, there isn't Councillor, enough room for it on site. Councillor Drake, I think you were next. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to go, go into re reiterate what, what Rosemary has just said. I just do not see how this can possibly be a habitable dwelling. I just do not see how, how it could actually meet relevant criteria for that. And um, I did wonder whether this is a first step towards something a bit a bit larger, which also would be squeezing up, you know, the term used before, a, a quart into a pint pot. Uh, Councillor Paul, did you have your hand up? Yeah, have you got any plans of the layout inside the outbuilding? Um, yes, did, were they not part of the... Um, I thought the last the slide there? was. I'm only running with an agenda. I said, yeah, there you go. I've lost my Zoom meeting. Can you do this to me? Yeah, so essentially, I mean, I can sort of kind of explain to you. So looking at it, you've got the small bathroom area there, which Mim is just showing. And then underneath that is the bedroom area. And then to the right of that is the, um, the living space with the kitchenette. <coughs> I mean, you can see here actually from these elevational images that there is very little window as well. Um, there's no windows to the rear. There's two very small sort of porthole style type high level ones to the left elevation. And then just a very small um, window to the right elevation. And then a large sort of kind of, I suppose, frontage um, French doors. And that is literally it. I just say, so it's my, on my patch. I know another gentleman, I did know a gentleman who lived there who died. And um, I, I think we had an objection, probably from eight wide close. I would have called it in, but I had no communication. So I'll let the officers decide. And if they say yes, I think we should have called it in. But never mind. Uh, Councillor Liver. Hi. Um, was it last council meeting where we had two? Um, decisions on something similar, but they were both long West Common Way. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I was just wondering if we knew what the dimensions of the, of can remember, because was that one, one of them was going to be 8.5 metres and that was turned down because it was an overdevelopment or it was too big for, yeah. Does that, yeah. was that, was it? Yeah, those ones, those ones were going to be, one of them had a bathroom and they were um, going to be used as golf practice um, areas. Um, yes. And one in particular was very large and mm. that was going, I think we recommended refusal on that one because yeah. of loss of amenity to the property at the rear. Yeah, and was that one, I can't remember, was that one going to be 8.5 metres in height? I it I was, I, I can't remember the exact height, but I know it was extremely large. It was, yeah. it was, um, yeah, I know it was particularly high, um, but I don't know how high. No. It was extremely large, that's all I know. I mean, I'm one metre 60. So. Um, yeah. uh, Councillor Turnbull. Thanks, Chair. I mean, effectively, the size of this area is in excess of 400 uh, square feet, I think. Is that right? Uh, five metres, which is 15 feet by uh, 16 feet by um, 20 odd feet. What's that? 16 and 20 yards, about 400 square feet, I think. Now, if you look at many modern flat developments, one bedroom flat developments that are actually smaller than this unit is, this unit to me is patently accommodation full-time accommodation and it's just not appropriate full stop it should even be considered yeah i think there's a, a oh councillor hill um yeah i just can add on um yeah I, I agree with what's been said about um the size of it being too big um if the uh, developments of these sort in you know, I, I think um you're probably looking at more suitable for something like a small sort of home office or something um uh, but yeah, like you say, um, 
pretty permanent residential accommodation uh, on this site is is just not aspect. Yes. Yeah, no. I think uh, I think we have a broad consensus um, that the development is is unacceptable. Um, in which case, I'll propose a vote on the recommendation of refusal as set out. All in favour? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 5 2021 2017 and 1 don't meet the criteria required for consideration. So next on our list is 5 2021 at 3 St John's Road. Your observations on this one, Heather? Okay, so I think there's four images to share with this one. Number seven to number 10. Thank you. Okay. Right, so um, this proposal is to build um, above the existing garage and the existing ut utility space at the first floor level and extend rearwards at the ground floor level. Um, one additional bedroom being created. The roof line remains subservient to the main property and sympathetic to the neighbouring property. Neighbouring properties are of a similar style and size to this proposed property. Parking for three cars off street and the property is locally listed and in the conservation area. Then I've said consider no objection subject to the appropriate design and use of materials on this locally listed building in the Hoffman Conservation Area. Policies 85 and 87 of the District Plan Affairs. Thank you, Heather. Uh, any councillors have any comments on this one? Uh, Councillor Paul. It's got two obstacles. It's locally listed in the conservation area, so I'm not saying I object to it. I'm just saying it's got two hurdles to jump through. Now, um, my my only comment on that one, Councillor Paul, is a sort of relevant one: is are we concerned that it looks a little bit like terracing, given how close it is to the neighbour? I don't have a strong opinion either way, but I just thought I'd put it out there for councillors' opinions. Mm. Use terracing too much, but but in the green belt you have to watch terracing. You yeah. can't see through the back. I suspect it's this close, isn't it? Yeah. I assume you're going to go. Is it the um, first floor? How many? How much far away from the boundary on that side? Sorry, Heather. No, that's fine. Let me just have a little look. Um... Yeah, me. It needs to be a meter, obviously. I wouldn't like to miss that. Yeah. It is, yeah. There is actually um, an access pathway down the side of the of the house oh, that's being built. retained. Oh, actually, no. Tell a lie. There's obviously smaller. Oh. So basically, they're building above the existing garage that's there. So there, there isn't. It's not a meter, but it's not currently a meter. So we aren't reducing the depth along the side. <coughs> um, it's. Remaining. It should be a meter of two stories, but never mind. I think the officers might pick one up. They do. They do normally allow a bit less. Um, oh, hang on a moment. I can see. I think it's eight hundred. Uh, eight hundred. Believe it's eight hundred. It's not quite a meter. I think it's eight hundred. Can just about see it. Twenty millimeters yeah. short. Twenty short. Yeah. Okay. Is, yeah. is that is that eight hundred in the two buildings or eight hundred up to the boundary? 800 between the um, the boundary line, so the fence, and the side of the garage. Yeah, it look, looking so at between, the plan, it, it looks tight. Yeah. The neighbour has actually built up to the boundary line. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so the boundary for the neighbour is actually their flank wall. They don't have the the, the fence you can see there where Mim's cursor is. Is uh -huh. actually yeah, that's where the fence ends and it becomes. Be, that's well before our local plan came out in nineteen ninety four. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any uh, further comments, Councillor Palmer? Uh, no, I was going to say, looking at that, I think it's right. Did. I just wondered if we wanted to add in something about concerns or no object subject to appropriate design, um, something about including um, no terracing effect or something like that. Would it be if we concerned? Are we, I mean, if we're concerned about possible terracing effect, should we put something in? Yeah. So is it just for my 
I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Is it terracing or street scene that we would normally use as the catch-all for um, this sort of thing? Big both. <laughs> Could be both. Uh, well, we, there is actually a specific policy that relates to side extensions um, and mentions the, the terracing effects. The so policy 72, seven is for side extensions where the cumulative effect would lead to terracing of detached or semi-detached houses extensions other than at ground floor level shall normally be a minimum of one meter from the party boundary so there okay. is actually a policy specifically for side extensions and avoiding terracing um, in which case i would agree with councillor farmer we should add some yeah. language in about um specifically terracing referencing that policy yeah uh, any other councillors like to comment on this one I can't see any, in which case are we happy with no objections subject to that um, additional wording on terracing? All in favour? Yeah, it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I shall include that. Um, next one we have is 5 2021 1793 at 44 Churchfield. Your observations on this one, Heather? Okay, yeah, so I think that there's um, six images for this one, starting at number 11. Okay, so the proposal is to extend forwards over the existing single storey front projection to two storey level and to convert the garage into habitable accommodation. No additional bedrooms, just an increase in size. There's loss of one parking space, but additional provision has been made to the frontage. Already there is quite a cluttered layout existing, um, already existing within the street scene. The proposal does not appear to have a detrimental impact on the street scene. The proposal is also to install a garden outbuilding along the boundary line with garden num number 42 Churchfield, the height of which is three metres to the roof ridge and 7.2 metres width along the boundary. There is a removal of a narrow shed along the side of the property is also proposed. I said consider no objection subject to the no loss of amenity to number 42 Churchfield and the proposed garden outbuilding policy 72 of the district plan refers. Thank you, Heather. Any comments on this one? Councillor Paul. Well, I understand where that 7.2 metres goes down the boundary line. I mean, it used to be three metres, but we now relax that a bit. It still seems a lot, 7.2. Is it possible to show on a plan? Yeah, so I think, was it not in one of the images that? I'd put on the um, thing. If not, I have got them here. I couldn't see. I might it not either. have included yeah, it. There, there is. Uh... Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I might not have included it. Um, yeah, this one does show it. So um, I think it's this one. Yes. Yeah, so the the right hand um, image. You've got number forty four the house, and then to the right of that says number forty two garage, and behind Behind that is the hatched area of where the proposed outbuilding, that's it, yeah, where the proposed outbuilding is going to be installed. Um, I have got, I mean, I, I can take back the control and I can get up the, um, the sort of elevations of the outbuilding if you wanted to see the elevations. Yes, please. Do, do you want to see those? Yeah. Okay, right. I'll just take back. Right, Mim, you'll need to pass back me to be host if that's okay. Then I can get up the drawings. Everyone to okay. see. Oh, sorry. Where have you gone? There you are. Right. Okay. So it's participants. Is it participants? Yeah. So, yeah, participants. And then if you click on to just hover on me and then it says more. That's it. Yeah. Um, right, okay. I've just gone up. Oh, hang on. More. You have put that for a reason, haven't you? In any case, no. All oh, right, okay. So I've just got to put your, your name in. Make, right? no, no, so just make me host. No, oh, it's not coming up, is that? Oh, there we go. Yeah, hang on. Sorry. All right. Yep, yeah, okay. Okay, oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Let me just, um, I'll get up the drawings so that you can see. Yeah. 
Je m'en suis Okay, I think it's this one here. Okay, so here we go. So this is the um, the garden shed. So the, this here is the um, frontage of it, just at the top here. And then you've got the rear elevation, which is just here, and then the ends either side. So essentially that is the said shed, which is a total of, um, total, of yeah, 7.2 meters in width across here and then the three meters in depth just along there. And that's it. Thank you, Helen. Okay, yeah. No? Yeah, any uh, council assembly? Thanks, Chair. I, I must admit, when I see this now, my reaction is that's uh, too much bulk in the back garden, right along the fence line. So, in, in terms of overdevelopment or loss of amenity? Both. Okay. Any further comments on, on this one? It covers it in two lines, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Liver. Um, it's just that the height of this particular one will be three metres, which is in contrast to the one, the previous one, which was going to be 8.5 metres in height. Um, no, it's not. It's um, it was uh, the previous one was 8.5 metres in, in, in sort of width. 8.5 metres would be the height of a house. Oh, six metres. Yeah. 2.87 centimeters in height and this one is three meters in yeah. height this one is even higher than the other one um yeah right, so this one so the height of this is um to the yeah to the ridge height of yeah. it to the um the, the ridge yeah so it's three meters in height yeah um to the to the height of the pitch of the roof, to the, the ridge line, the roof line. And the previous one, it was 2.87 metres in height. Yes, because the previous one had a flat roof. Okay. Whereas this one is the, to the, um, they haven't got the, the dimensions. Always they have, so the dimensions to the point sort of where the roof would, you know, the yeah. normal straight level of the of the um, height is 2.129 meters. I'll show you. I'll um, I'll share the screen again. Yeah. So here's the height here. So the height is three meters to the 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 height of the pitch, sort mm. of the ridge, but the actual height is 2.129. To the point where it sort of kind of ends, the wall ends. Okay. I was going to point That's out. I was just going to point out. There is absolutely no detail. It looks like it's got two rooms. There's no detail of the internal layout. So I am getting the sense we're minded towards more towards express concern. Um, in which case I would propose a vote on express concern due to um, loss, potential loss of amenity and overdevelopment on this site. Um, I'm sure there's a more eloquent way of saying that, but uh, that's the sort of thrust of it. Uh, Councillor Turnbull. Chair, is it not rejection? I get, I... I get the feeling it should be rejection. Uh, I will be guided by the, the committee on it, but I think... Personally, I'd be more inclined towards express concern. So I think if we have a vote on express concern and see where the, the votes land, and then if we need to uh, have a vote on rejection, does that work for everyone? 
Um, so I'll start with the vote on express concern. All in favour of that? Okay, so that's four. Is that a majority? So yes, if you if you take if the others are the, the other three, you take the casting vote, Matt, as the chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, in that case, I think we're going with express concern on the, the basis as set out. Okay. Well, I had to cast a casting vote before. <laughs> um, on to 5-2021-108, what's, no, sorry, 1802. Um, uh, that doesn't meet the criteria, neither does 2044. 2011-1832. So the next one we're looking at is uh, 5 2058 at 33 Cold Harbour Lane. Okay, Mim, you are host again. Oh, um, am I? Okay. Yeah, I have given you back that, uh, that, that honor. job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so there's right. a couple of images for this one, starting at number 16. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is um, essentially, uh, we've actually, this committee looked at this not so long ago um, for the previous permission that's been granted. So permission has already been granted and works have commenced on a similar proposal. This proposal just seeks to amend the internal layout of the property, amend the roof design and include a larger port to the frontage. No other major changes are proposed. No objection is my suggestion. Thank you, Heather. Any uh, comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any hands, in which case, are we all minded to go with the recommendation of no objection? All in favour? Thank you. I much prefer it when it's unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> but so next one is 5-2021-2066 at 13 Mayfield Close. Uh, your observations on this one, Heather? Yes, so this one is, uh, there's a couple of images for this one, 18 and 19. Um, so this is actually um, a proposal is to infill at the ground floor level to the rear in line with the existing rear ground floor element, the creation of a bathroom over the existing ground floor front element and the addition of a rear roof terrace over the existing flat roof ground floor element. Due to the positioning of the properties in the street, there doesn't appear to be any overlooking of number 12 Mayfield close from the proposed roof terrace. Consider no objections subject to the known loss of means to number 12 Mayfield close from the proposed rear roof terrace. Policy 72 of the District Plan Affairs. Thank you, Heather. Any comments on this one? We can't see any, in which case, uh, are we mind to go the recommendation of no objections subject to no loss of immunity? All in favour? Okay. Unanimous. Right. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, next up is 5 2021 which doesn't meet the criteria. So on to 5 at 9 Pennycroft. Your observations on this one? Yeah, that's fine. There's no images for this one. Um, mm. So this is um, actually essentially just a resubmission following an approval. And the only change from the previously approved scheme relates to the changing of the rear ground floor extension roof from a sloping to a flat roof with a skylight. No other significant changes. Consider no objection. Thank you, Heather. Um, any comments on this one from councillors? Can't see any. We might go with the recommendation of no objection. Yes, you know. Thank you. Yep. Perfect. On to 5-2021-2053 at 82 Cowper Road. Your uh, observations on this one, Heather? Okay, yep, so there's just one image, I believe, this one, which is number 20. Um, so this proposal is to extend the rearwards ground floor elements to in line with the neighbour's rear building line and out the side to the mirror the footprint of the other neighbouring property with roof lights to one side. The addition of relux windows in the roof to the front and of dormer window to the rear, like many other properties in the roof have done, in the roof, in the road has, have done. No increase in bedrooms, properties locally listed in the Hartland Conservation Area. 
So I have said, consider no objection, subject to the appropriate design and use of materials on this locally listed building in the Harkenden Conservation Area, policies 85 and 87, the District Plan Affairs. Thank you, Heather. Any comments from councillors on this one? Councillor Turnbull. Thanks, Chair. I looked at the, the details on the planning application. I wasn't entirely convinced that this was merely being an extension to match the extension in number 84. My reaction is it seemed to be going much further back unless I misunderstood what I saw on the block plans. I was certain, Heather, that it's actually backing on to an, an existing development on, in number 84. That's is, it going, yeah, is it going further down the plot? Um. Where are we? Is that one there? I just the existing one here. Um, no, I think of course um, I can get up the the drawings again for it, but from the line that I can see here, it appears to be absolutely in line with the neighbour. Will that be 80 or 84? 84, like, 80, number 84. 84. Okay, yeah. if you think it's in line, I'm happy yeah. then. Um, yes, I mean, let me just, let me just be absolutely sure. If I want to just look at the existing. Um, yes, okay, let me, um, Min, can you take, just can you pass me back to being host and then I'll just show you these two images that I've got here. Thank yeah, you, sure. just, just so that I can be um, absolutely clear. Hey. Thank you. Okay, right, so I'll show you. Okay, so here, um, you just the other one there okay so here we go this is the existing so you can see here at the back on this sort of roof here this is the existing here and then this is the neighbor at number 84 okay. there okay and then just moving forward to be to the proposed so we've now moved out to be in line with the um the back line of number 84 and 82. 80 I stand, I stand this, correct. Yeah. yeah is this property stand, that's just here so okay i stand, I stand corrected thank you very okay. much that's fine. I just it, it at least if I just sort of show, then you can be satisfied that um, that's okay. okay. Right, I shall pass back to you now, Mim again. Okay. And any other comments on this one? I can't see any. In which case, uh, I'm minded to go with the recommendation. All in favour? It's unanimous. Hey, that's great. Thank you. Perfect. So on to 5-2021-2073 at 16 Tennyson Road. Your observations on this one, Heather? Okay, just the one image again for this one, number okay. 21. So this is another application that is essentially putting in um, a slight changes to a recently approved scheme. Um, so the only apparent change to the approved scheme is the amendment to the roof form and the window configuration at the second floor level. No other changes to approved scheme. Uh, so I've con said consider no objection subject to the appropriate design and use of materials and this locally listed building in the Harper New Conservation Area, policy 85 and 87, the District Plan Affairs. Thank you, Heather. Any comments on this one from the councillors? I can't see any. Um, in which case, uh, are we minded to go with the recommendation of no objection? That's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Uh, 5-2021-2074 doesn't meet the criteria required. So on to... 5 2021 20, 2077 at 11 Townsend Lane. Uh, your observations on this one, Heather? Yep, so there's three images for this one starting at number 22. Um, okay, so this is a plot of a very good size. Um, the road is made up of a selection of sizes and style of property. 
There's a significant increase in footprint side to side, but only 3.5 metres rearwards at single storey level only. Design and materials are sympathetic to the original locally listed house in the conservation area. The proposal doesn't appear to have any effect on the neighbouring properties. There is an increase from four to six bedrooms, but appears to be ample parking on the site. No tree works are proposed. Therefore, I've said consider no objections subject to the appropriate design and use materials on this locally listed building in the Hartland and Conservation Area, policy 85 and 87 of the District Plan and Affairs. Thank you, Heather. Any comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any. Oh, in which case, are we mind to go with the recommendation of no objection subject to etc. All in favour? Yes, you know us. Okay, and thank you. Uh, uh, 5 2021 2089 sorry 2089 uh, at 3 Ridgewood Drive. Your observations on this one, Heather? Okay, yep. So there's three images for this one starting at 25. Um, okay, so this actually is a site that we not long ago looked at actually, um, but they've come back with a, a different scheme. So despite permission being granted for a similar proposal, this differs in a number of ways in terms of the roof form, location of the existing, so of the extensions and appearance on the street scene. The ground floor layout remains as the approved scheme, but in this proposal, there is the addition of a first floor extension to the side and two dormer windows to the front, which changes the appearance from the approved scheme. Despite these changes, is the proposal appears acceptable. The neighbouring property's ridge height is of a similar height to this proposal. Parking provision remains unchanged, no tree works. Consider no objection. Thank you. Heather, any uh, observations or comments from councillors on this one? I can't see any, in which case are we mind to go with the recommendation of no objection? Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. On to 5 2024 at 17, the Pleasants. Your comments on this one, Heather? Yep, this one's quite a simple one, actually. So there's just one image for this number 28. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, the only notable change from the approved scheme is to the roof form and the marginal bringing forward of the building line porch and garage. All other, all other elements appear to remain the same. So I highlighted them just in the red there, basically. Um, consider no objection. Thank you, Heather. Any comments from councillors? Can't see any, in which case we might go the recommendation of no objection. Okay. That's unanimous. Thank you. Perfect. On to... 5 2021 2162 at 25 Park Mount. Your observations on this one, Heather? Yep, so there's three images for this one starting 29. Okay, so this one is the proposal to extend the side at two storey level with a partial wraparound at two storey level to the rear to a single storey extension. The raising of the roof with addition of a flat roof lawn to the rear across most of the width of the roof. Plot slightly angles to the rear, providing extra space for the rear extension. An additional bedroom, closest neighbour to the extensions is a good distance away. Property has no parking like most properties in the road, no tree works. So I've said consider no objection subject to no loss of community to number 27 Park Mount, policy 72 of the District Plan and Affairs. Thank you, Heather. Any uh, councillor comments on this one? Councillor Turnbull. Chair, can we actually see um, the footprint of the sort of the, not the elevation, the, the plan? Is the plan available? Was that, did, did I include that in there, Mim? I Maybe couldn't see the plan. I don't think it's there. No, I might not have done. Because my notes, no. when I looked at it, I, I, okay. thought, I thought it seemed to be um, pretty um, ominous for 23 and 27. It seemed to be a a big um, chunk of mass into the back garden. Maybe I'm wrong. That, that was my comments when I looked at this earlier. Mim, could you put me back as host again and then I'll do the share screen. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. 
Sorry, of course, it would have to be that this particular one has three separate images to show. <laughs> okay, right. Um, Nigel, are you wanting me to show the existing and the proposed? Yeah, next yes, to each please. Other? Yep. yes, please. Okay. Okay, right. So here we've got the ground floor element um, as it is existing. And then we've got the proposed. So that's the existing and that's the proposed. So you can see here that there's the sort of the wrap around um, sort of taking over the footprint almost of where the outhouse is at the back. So that's ground floor level. And then at first floor level, we've got the standard sort of kind of square shape moving to become a square shape with the small element of extension at first floor level for the bedroom three over that ground floor. So, so, so the, 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 uh, yeah, the extension into the rear, which is a bedroom plus a null suite, that's yep. only one story, is it? That's so that goes. So, yes, you've got the ground floor like this, you've got the utility and everything, and then directly above it, this oh, going... element here is the only bit that is at first floor level. And so, so that means if you go back to the, the plan showing the building next door, yeah, well, you've, got a, the... you've, got a, you've got a two you've got a two story extension along the boundary line, looking, you know, sort of right up against the boundary line of the house next door in the back garden. If you go to the plan showing the two, the property, is it 27 or 23 next door? I think it's the ground floor one, PDF. Okay. Which this one, this one there here. There we are. Yeah, you got all that. That one there. there. And what's that, what, 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 you know, that to me looks like the back of the house, not the side of the house. Though, because so it, no, that is, so this is so this is the front here, and then this is the back of the house here. So that house there is the one that's angled that you can see in this image that's um, just here. Right. So the house which is on the the right hand side is this white one here. Is well, I'm looking. Yeah, which, which to me means you're looking at the back of the house. So the back of the house is now looking onto a two story building. That, um, which, doesn't the, far enough, which doesn't look far enough away. On okay. the left, Heather, that, the, uh, the grey property on the left. What, this one here? Yeah, is that a window? Um, it could be. I, 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 I don't know, to be honest, because I can't, I, I'm part from actually sort of just looking at the image that I've got here. I can't, yeah. I can't see down the side. I mean, I could go on to the, the, the um, let me just see if I can go on to Google Maps and see if I can no, get a that, better idea. That's fine. I think it just, so long as we make sure that both properties are mentioned in amenity, whatever the outcome um, we decide to come to, because I'd just be, I, I'd want to not only mention one of them, if that makes sense. Okay. If, if you look at, if you look at slide it's, 20, yeah, if you look at slide 29, you can see the white building effectively faces sideways on to 25. Yet along up the opposite the side of that building, you're now going to have a two-story building, which I doubt if it's going to be far enough for you. What's the distance between buildings should be uh, in back gardens facing each other at 20 odd meters or 17 meters? It's window to window, um, is it 17 meters, but I is don't. It? Yeah, it's, it's um, only window to window. It doesn't refer oh, it? to sort okay. of this, yeah, it's only, it's sort of for overlooking really a direct window to window. Um, you, you see the point I'm making? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Liver. Uh, I, th I think if you look at the pic, the photograph, um, it gives, gives more of a view of, the relationship between those two houses. Um, Probably this one might be the best actually because I can move it around. Can you can you show the photograph? 
that's on the so like that. We're no, still seeing a PDF. The street view. That one there. We're still seeing a PDF, Heather. Yeah. Okay, it should be. You should see this one. No, I'm I'm talking about um the the actual street scene one. Right, okay, hang on a moment. It should be, what I'm looking at here should be what you should be seeing, so I'm not quite sure why you're not seeing it. Okay. I must admit. It should, it should be slide 29 we should be looking at. Yeah. Which is not coming up. Let me try sharing again. It should be what I had on my screen should be what you were seeing. I think when you screen share, you screen share into the app rather than the screen, if that makes sense. Right, try again. There we go. Try now. That's it. That's it. So, as as I see it, that the the white property uh, to the right has a large uh, extension built on the first floor, which looks directly into well, where the that could be where the extension is. On Twenty Five Park Mount, and I'm is is that the is that the do they have a side entrance to that house by the looks of it, and that that is the side entrance to um, the White House. Yeah, so I think that the entrance door is where you can see that sort of kind of bush hedging. That bush there, yeah. Yeah, and then above that, they've extended out. So. Um, quite considerably looking into 25 Park Mount. I mean, what might be a useful image actually is if I showed you the block plan. Let me see if I can show you the block plan for this one. Doesn't look like a great deal of space and extension on that block. Oh. That might help to give you an idea. So essentially the two story element is going over that little bit of a, a prong at the back. It's going over the site of the existing outhouse. And, and coming towards the border. Mm. It doesn't look so bad on the site plan. It looks far worse than the detailed plans. So as long as as long as there's something to the effect any any impact on 23 and 27, I suppose I'm, I'd, I'd be happy. Yeah. Councillor Hill. Um, yeah, there's two things I've noticed from that is uh, one is how um, 27 is slightly angled away from uh, 25, which me perhaps means that there might be less of an impact on loss of immunity to 27. Um, and also just on that 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 what we just saw there, it looked like there were lots of on the site plan of the street scene or the, from above, it looked like there was quite, there was lots of other houses where there's quite a small barrier between, or distance between the two, between plots. So I, I wonder if that's just quite normal for the street. Yeah, no, thank, thanks for that, Councillor Hill. Um, any further comments from councillors? Councillor Paul. It's a rather big roof storm, isn't it? It goes a full width almost. I know it's yep. set down from the ridge, I noticed before, but a rather large, I wouldn't say ugly, but <laughs> accommodating, I think is the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Uh, any further comments from councillors? No, right. Um, are we minded towards no objection, express concern, or I don't think we're minded towards anything further than that, but um, I've been wrong about these things before. Um, shall I start on no objection and build our way up from there? So we'll have the, the language regardless, we'll have the language about subject to no loss of immunity to 23 and 27. Uh, but all in favour of, of no objection? Looks like a majority. Cool. Yeah, yeah. 
You mean no objection? Five. No, you mean oh. subject to the no subject to no yes. loss of immunity? Yeah. Okay. Subject to no loss of immunity. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Cool. So I think that's unanimous in the end. That was unanimous. Okay. Perfect. Right. Uh, we clean something about 27, 23 as yes. well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, fine. Subject to no loss of immunity to the uh, the two neighbours. Twenty three and twenty seven part man. Perfect. Right. On to 5 2021 2141 at 12 Pondwick Road. Heather, your observations on this one? Yes. Okay. So this was quite an interesting one, actually. Um, so this is, um, with, I think there's a number of images, actually, about six or seven images I've shared with this one, starting at number 33. So this is a proposal to replace existing dwelling with a contemporary style dwelling. Site is on the end of the road and bordered as Claygate Avenue, which is made up of a selection of style detached dwellings. There are a variety of roof lines and shapes, mostly sweeping cat style, um, cat slide style um, on this particular proposal. The central ridge height of the roof is 9.5 metres, with the neighbouring property ridge at 7.5 metres, although the proposal is subservient to this, to this property side. Footprint differs little from the original dwelling, although it is closer to the boundaries with Claygate Avenue. Materials are not overly out of keeping with the surrounding area. There are large stretches of windows, although not overlooking of neighbouring properties. One extra bedroom added, parking provision is ample, no tree works proposed, not conservation area. So I say consider no objections subject to the no loss of meaty to number 10 Pondrick Road and the proposed new dwelling not having an unacceptable effect on the appearance of the street scene. Policies ESD 1 and 2 of the neighbourhood plan and 69 and 70 if the district plan refers. So yeah, so this was a bit of, a, of an interesting one, to be honest. Ev, can you show the photos because you're oh, still closed? Yes, sorry. <laughs> I did not transfer back. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, Okay, so this is the existing dwelling here on the corner of um, Pondrick Road and Claygate Avenue. So that's the existing. And then this is what is proposed, essentially sort of kind of from exactly you're, the same viewpoint. You're not sharing your screen, Heather. We can't see the pictures. Sorry, bear me a second. Start again. It's because I'm still on the other image. Let me start. Okay, apologies. There we go. That's a bit better now. Yeah. Can you all see that? Yeah. 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 Okay, so Pondrick, 12 Pondrick, Pondrick Road, so we've got the corner here, which is um, on borders onto Claygate Avenue, so this is the existing dwelling here, and this is the viewpoint of what it would be, um, what's in the proposal, is this sort of more contemporary style dwelling, and then this is another sort of angle to give you an idea of to what the street view looks like, and this is what that would look like from the, um, in this particular proposal. So you can see here the existing um, and the proposed block plan. So the existing is the footprint just there, with this is the proposed new block plan, new um, footprint. And then these are a selection of images of what these uh, dwelling will look like from various angles and um, elevations. And then there is a, um, like a 3D bird's eye view of the, Proposal next to the existing dwelling next door. That's architecturally <laughs> interesting, I would suggest. Yes, yeah. So um, interestingly, there has been one or two applications in this quite close vicinity that have put in applications for contemporary style dwellings. One of them is actually in the corner of, Bar of Barnes Dean. I didn't show any images of that because although it's contemporary, it's grey slate and doesn't really match this in terms of sort of the exact style, but there is definitely um, a sign of, you know, an introduction of contemporary style dwellings within this vicinity. Is this, this, is this conservation area? No, not conservation really? area. No. Just thought I ought to check. Um, okay, any you... comments from councillors? Councillor Liber. Uh, on the south side elevation, is that a balcony? Don't believe that I noticed that there are any balconies. Let me just double check the plans here. Actually, 
actually, Councillor um, Livy, yes, you, you're correct. There is actually a door that accesses um, a small element of balcony um, on that rear elevation. So I'll it, show you. Yeah, I'll share the screen just so that you can all see. Does it overlook, do you think? So this is the element here that Councillor Liver is referring to. Um, and there's a little door that just comes out of sort of the back here. So in a sense, no, there's no overlooking um, because as you can see, the neighbouring property there is has no, no has no side windows overlooking. And the um, if I can show you this one here, hopefully, if it will just show, there's actually, you can see here that there's no neighbouring properties in the close vicinity. It does overlook the garden of the neighbour though, doesn't it? Um, yes, but I think the property of the neighbour is quite some distance away. Okay. Councillor Turnbull. Thanks, Chair. While I would like that to end up paying the heating bills of all the space that this says, it seems to have two storey heights in much of the house. And I know, I know how much that costs to heat in our house. But I have two observations. One is that it's a little bit nearer, is it Claygate than the existing house? And will that make it a blind corner or that may not be, that may not be a planning issue, I don't know. But the one thing that does bother me is the height. I don't have any objection to modern designs, et cetera, et cetera. I'm all in favor of that sort of thing. But the height, it's quite a bit bigger than that, higher than the house next door and all the other houses in that street. That does stick out to me. Thank you, Councillor Turnbull. Councillor Farmer, did I see your hand up? I mean, yes, I was gonna say, in fact, I was gonna make the same point about the height and it was a matter of taste, but to my mind, because of the design and the height, in some respects, it looks more like the design you see sometimes, for instance, for a modern church than actually for a dwelling house. I was uh, just thinking And that. I'm not convinced yeah. it actually looks totally like a residential building. Yeah, no, I thought that. It looks like one of those American-style churches, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, any further comments from councillors? Councillor Hill. Um, yeah, just a, a, firstly, a question on um, about the roof height. It says uh, that it's two meters higher than the neighboring property, but it also says subservient to this property. Does that mean because it kind of slopes away from the neighboring property? Yes, so basically if you, um, I'll, I'll show you, just share the screen so you can see um, what I'm referring to. Okay, yes. so you can see here, yes, yeah, so this so my the height that I've um, stated is at the highest point here. And then this element here is subservient to this property here. So actually sort of kind of the, the bit that affects them, i.e. the closest bit to them, is no higher than the existing um, dwelling on that side. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah so that's interesting. So, so to me, that it's not, you know, it, although it's, it's not like fully ridge, it's kind of like a, almost like a half ridge, which kind of makes... The height to me less of a concern but um yeah no, I, I would also add that there's i know there's something similar to this like a more contemporary style in um Sauncy avenue it's the other side of harpen then but mm -hmm. I remember that when when that one went up um so yeah well, just quite interesting <laughs> yes um any further comments from councillors councillor paul yeah well my on what Harry said a minute ago, Saunsey Avenue is very reminiscent of this one, probably the same architect. It doesn't look out of place there. Um, because there are some fairly new dwellings down there. At the moment, um, these contemporary type buildings are appearing. I've lost the battle of Jepson too, and they seem to also seem to like it. There's one in Park, Park, um, Longwood Park. I forget where the other one is, but it's a, it's a trend. I don't see the old heart being rebuilt in that style, but it doesn't seem to be. I'm, I'm, not, 
I'm an oldie, you know. I like the old style, but having said that, these are appearing where they don't seem to fall foul of planning. So, good luck for if I get away with it. <laughs> we, we can only hope that the whole of Harpenden isn't being rebuilt in this style. But anyway, um, <laughs> I think on a planning level, I think so long as there's no loss of amenity, I don't think we can um, object to this one. Interesting, though, I find the design. Um, in that, but on that basis, I would propose. Um, oh, Councillor Temple. How, how about the height issue, Chair? Um, I think I take your point on the height issue. I think, personally, given the way that they've done the roof, I don't think the height is necessarily a a problem because, particularly with it being on the end of the road, I just can't see that that would be a, a enough for an express concern or a recommend refusal. Um, I mean, I'm happy to put some language in about the street scene into a subject too. It's um, already there, Chair. Oh, so it is. <laughs> I have read this, I promise. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so um, are we, um, as I say, I'm minded to, um, to vote on starting with no objection with the language within the recommendation and then moving harder if um, if we don't have a majority for that. So all in favor of no objection? Yep, it's unanimous. Perfect. Um, oh, it's an, it's an interesting one, to be honest. It is an interesting one. I did sit and look at it hard because it is so very different. But when you sit there and you have to gauge it against the, the policies that are available to you, they, you know, it's been done in a way to make sure that they address those sorts of concerns. Because, yeah. as you say, it's on the end of a road and it doesn't have any effect to anybody on that left hand side as it does to the right. Yeah. It could it's, be an uh... extensive build. I reckon the build costs would be heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I think as Matt said, because it's not a conservation area either, we've kind of got to be a bit more, uh, yeah. you can't worry so much about the modern contemporary design, I guess, as well. If they start popping up on every street corner, I may change that opinion, but yes. Um, <laughs> uh, on to item seven, we've not received any appeals. Um, item eight is the preservation order tree works, which are just for noting. Uh, item nine, uh, the conservation area tree works and technical applications, also just for noting. The list of weekly decisions, also just for noting. And the date of the next meeting is on Tuesday, the 31st of August at 7.30 um, by Zoom. And Plans North at the district is next on Monday, the 13th of September at 7 p.m. And uh, that is all of our business for the evening. So I'll bring the meeting to a close at 8.35. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for coming along with, uh, once again. Have a good um, evening. Be Thanks, Chair. Before you, oh, thank before, you all, before you all disappear, just as a, a bit of a flag, the next meeting on the 31st of August will be our last one held by Zoom, because I believe that all committee meetings after the 1st of September will be moving to being in person. So just thought I'd flag that with you, that after that, we will be back, you know, in the room with each other. Okay. Look forward to it. And I thank the officers for all their hard work. Yeah. That's very kind of you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Well, okay. Perfect. Right. Thank you, everybody. Good evening, all. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.